A big portion of the research that's being done on people in space on this space station, especially the one-year crew members, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Koryenko, is designed to learn how a long exposure in the weightless environment affects the human body. And that does include the brain. Astronauts who return from the space station have been found to have experienced some changes in their brain when it comes to things like balance and movement and cognition. There is an experiment called neuromapping, which will use magnetic resonance imaging to look for changes uh, in the brains when those astronauts come home. But the neuromapping protocol is keeping close tabs on them while they're in space, too. My colleague Lori Meggs at the Payload Operations Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, spoke with the neuromapping principal investigator about her study of the brain in space. I, I'm really interested in changes that will occur in vestibularly mediated behaviors. So these are things like balance, spatial orientation, figuring out which way is up and down, making decisions, processing spatial information based on that. So cognitive and motor behaviors. And then with the imaging work, we're particularly interested in brain regions that we know control these behaviors. So things like the cerebellum, motor cortex, somatosensory cortex. These are the re regions that we think will show big changes. And we're really interested in whether those changes correlate with the behavioral effects and we're also interested in looking at once the behavior returns to normal post-flight, which we know happens for most individuals within a few weeks to a month, we're interested in whether the brain control of these behaviors has also returned to normal or if there are some persistent changes as compensation or reorganization. How does that relate to me on Earth? Sure. So we think this is really interesting as well in terms of Earth for Firstly, because this is really an interesting example for studying the brain's capacity for neuroplasticity. So these individuals are exposed to microgravity 24 hours a day for either six months or one year in the case of the one-year mission. So we think we'll be able to really look at how the healthy brain can reorganize in response to this very profound stimulus. It's also interesting to people on Earth because these vestibular changes that we see in astronauts are paralleled in healthy aging. What have you learned from the first bed rest study since you've completed that? Is there anything you can share with us that you've learned? Sure, I can share that we have seen rather profound changes in brain structure and brain function. And in some cases, these brain changes are correlated with the balance changes. So if you're someone who changes structure um, more than somebody else in the cerebellum, a region that controls balance, you actually show less balance perturbation when you get out of bed rest, suggesting that the brain is trying to compensate or upregulate some of these structures um, to adapt to the bed rest environment. Lastly, why does it interest you to study the brain? Oh, I, I think the brain is just fascinating. It's one of our, our last great scientific frontiers, understanding what makes us human, how do we control our movements, what differentiates one individual from another in terms of their motor and cognitive abilities. And spaceflight is a different way to study this, a unique way to study it. Yes, in my laboratory at University of Michigan, I conduct a number of experiments on neuroplasticity. But in that case, I get subjects that come into my lab and practice a motor behavior, maybe for an hour, maybe for a few sessions. But again, here I have people learning to control movement of their body in an altered environment that is present round the clock for months on end. So I think it'll be a very exciting adaptive plasticity experiment.